back for those of you. Um, thank you guys who commented on the first video. I really greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm so happy to see some familiar names. It's really exciting. People saying they were excited to see me back. So I'm glad. Uh, I would like you to please post in the comments below what you would like to see as my next video. Um, give me topics that you want me to cover and yeah, we will talk about them. I will just give you my personal opinions on them. Um, anything that I have that's relevant as far as my experiences. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. It looks like I have a halo going on here because of the light above me. My lighting in here is horrible, but we know this is all going to be raw and, un and unedited. So, <sighs> those of you guys who do YouTube will realize how really difficult it is to recreate a video that you've already created. So, I can't exactly recreate it. But what I will say is that how my day was the other day. This was last week. I had gone to run some errands and I had to pick up some meds and stuff like that. And so I happened to, I don't know why. It, it was really weird because. It was a beautiful day. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It wasn't too hot or anything like that. And I had, and for those of you who don't know, I lost my cousin in 2011 to colon and liver cancer. And we only had her six months after diagnosis. And she was 43 years old. And we were raised as sisters. Like, we were obviously not biologically sisters, we were cousins, but we called each other sisters. So some of you may understand that. Um, we both had brothers and so, <laughs> but bratty brothers. So we didn't have sisters in our lives. So I was over their house almost every single day or they were at our house and we, you know, did a lot of stuff together and she had two kids or three kids, I'm sorry, three kids. One of all three of them are doing wonderfully. One is a doctor or a nurse. Uh, she went to nursing school um, because she saw the care, the wonderful care that the nurses had given to her mother uh, when her mother was in the hospital. And the other one is either a teacher or almost about to graduate from, um, you know, teaching school because her mother was a teacher. And, uh, my cousin's name was Carolyn, Carrie, and she really enjoyed teaching. She really did. She found it later in life. She spent most of her life not really working. Her, her husband, you know, was pretty well off, so she didn't really need to. She stayed home with her children and, you know, then she decided to, she wanted to go back to school and get her teaching degree. And she did that at quite, you know, an older age, um, which, you know, I find very smart, actually. <laughs> to be 100% honest with you, I find it really smart. I really do think that kids at the age of 18 years old, um, as soon as they graduate high school, are not, they're, I, I know this was the case for me, they're not mature enough to go directly from the nest to a college campus like it it's just you know it's just a big free-for-all so you know most not I shouldn't say most of them of course you're very driven like my cousins um my my third my third um cousin her, her daughter um is she's working right now I think she's working in a medical office or a business office or something she's not really sure what she's going to do and she is the spitting image of me. Like, I don't mean spitting image, like, look wise, looks wise, although she does have, I'm just going to be playing with my hair, I'm sorry. Um, she doesn't have, she's dark like me. We always used to say our, our daughters, um, my daughter could be her daughter, and her daughter, her middle child could be my daughter. And her middle child, um, I'm not going to mention any names, obviously, because, you know, this is about other people, but 
spitting spitting image of me in the sense of personality, like moody at that age, um, drama, you know, just always sulking and you know that kind of thing, and kind of the rebel of the group, you know, and that was so me at her age. So we had a we had a lot in common, and you know, I I, I identify with her middle daughter quite a bit. Um, so we used to joke around and say, you know, let's switch kids because my kid really looked a lot like Carolyn and, you know, really could be Carolyn. Um, even though as she gets older, she's, she's totally the spitting, not spitting image of me. She, she does look a lot like me now, but, um, she acts wise. She, she acts a lot like me too. She's, follow, she's totally following in my footsteps, which I wish she wouldn't do <laughs> because I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not proud of. But, um, so it was just a beautiful day. I was running errands and I had to go pick up medication at Walgreens. And this, the cemetery where Carrie is buried is like directly around the corner from my condo complex. So I happened to drive by there and, you know, it hit me that I hadn't been there in like two years. So I was going to Walgreens anyway. So I picked up a couple things from Walgreens. And I said, you know, I'm going to go, you know, visit her, her grave. And so I went there and I took some pictures on my Facebook. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you can see the pictures that I took. I picked up a little like succulent plant, um, with not real, obviously, because, you know, I don't know how well they upkeep the you know, the things and, and stuff like that. But it was just a little, in a little pot. And then a cross that sticks into the ground. And it says, um, oh, what does it say? Let me get my phone. It says, oh, hold on, let me find it here. It says, I have so many pictures on my phone. I, oh my God, third world problems, right? <laughs> I'm sure we can all identify with that. What does it say? And where is it? Oh, okay. Here it is. Okay. So it says love, love. I can't even read with these glasses. These are my love completes your life. And then this little succulent plant. I don't know if you guys can, can kind of see this. There you go. So that's the picture. That's a little plant that I bought, and that's and then and this angel I had I had put an angel down. There's a an, little angel and a lamb, and then on this side there was a beautiful lily plant, and so that was not the angel that I had gotten. Um, obviously, after a couple years, you know they have to clean they have to clean things out, things break down, all that other stuff. So I went there and. I knew, like immediately, of course, where it was. It's not. It's not. It's a very small, quaint cemetery. It's not. It's not a big cemetery, um, at all. And there were a few really weird things that happened to me. So I hadn't been there in, like I said, in two years. And I'm just like scrolling through my Facebook. Hold on one second. Um, scrolling through my Facebook because I hadn't been there in two years. It was really painful for me. And well, I won't, I won't bother, but right now, but anyway, so it was for the first, I remember my mom having a conversation with my aunt, her mom. And even after about three years, so it's been like five years. So even after about three years, I did a lot of, I did relays for life. I did a lot of stuff for cancer research and everything like that. and. I was so, you know, really gung ho about it. And it was just really, really tough. There was never a moment where, you know how they say time heals all wounds. I mean, does it, there's always going to be a hole in my heart. And, but for the longest time, I couldn't even talk. I have a little, in fact, on my, I wish I had a picture of it on my phone, on my shelf that goes, you know, you keep all your movies and stuff in and whatever. Underneath my television, it hangs on the wall. I have a little Zen garden and it says Carrie and it says hope and courage on it. And it's just this little, you know, it, I, oh, 
it, this this guy made it for me, um, which I thought was very very sweet. So I have that. I have this tattoo on my arm. This was the actual cross that has her name at the bottom, and then it has the ribbon, which is blue and it fades into green um, for colon and liver. And then it has the, her birth date and her and her passing date. And this cross was actually I have it up there. It was actually on her casket. There were four of them on each side, you know, each corner. And her aunt gave me one, or my aunt gave me one, which I thought was so, so, so sweet. So I have a little, like, homage to her over there. And the first couple of years were horrific. I mean, I fell into the deepest depression. I already suffered from depression, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, PTSD. I mean, Jesus, I could, you know, if you, if, if you look up, you know, the medical, psychological medical book, dictionary, whatever they call it, the DV something something. Yeah, I, that's, that's my book. Like, you know, my, my therapist tell me. We're going to name it Chris's book, you know, like that kind of thing. But, um, so it was really super hard and I couldn't, I never could imagine a time in my life for those of you who have lost people and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my heart goes out to you because this was really the first person it wasn't the first person that I lost. In fact, that year, 2011, I, like, I will never forget 2011. It was the worst year of my life. Um, you know, when I lose my parents, obviously, those will be the worst years of my life. But, you know, it, it was the worst year of my life because I actually lost Carolyn, my grandfather my, on my mom's side, and my grandmother on my mom's side, all within a six-month span. Like, really? For real? It, it was just crazy. It was just a horrible, horrible, horrible year. It was, we had the blizzard that year, um, in, I think it was in October where all the power was out. We had to actually stay at my cousin's house or my aunt's house. And my cousin was staying with her at the time. And cause they had, they still had power. We didn't, you know, we didn't have power for days and days. And I couldn't mention her name without crying. I couldn't think about her without crying. I couldn't hold anything of hers without crying. Um, I remember almost immediately. My aunt had gone through her things and she had brought over some clothes that were Carolyn's. And they're not things that. Me and Carolyn had two totally different styles. So they're not things that I would ever, you know, wear. And it was very sweet, but it was way too soon. I remember I tucked them away in a drawer and I, I couldn't even look at them for the longest time. And then she had framed a picture of the two of us when we were, I think we were probably in our 20s, you know, at the time uh, together. And... It was so cute. Like, it was just really nice. And she, you know, my aunt always reached out and she would, you know, send me these little things, give me these little things and everything, which was very, very nice. But it was also very, very painful. And so I did all this Relay for Life and everything like that. I really involved myself in that, only to find out Relay for Life is a scam. <laughs> you know, um, a, a very, very, very small percentage of what you raise goes to cancer research. So just be careful guys about, you know, relay for life and all other stuff. I know some people are really, excuse me, really gung ho about it and everything like that. But so, you know, I did all that obviously in her memory and obviously at the time, I mean, yes, it was a good, you know, I had my own team and everything like that. And, you know, it, it was a good thing. I think it was therapeutic. Um, it was it was getting me out of the house and it was doing something productive in her memory. So, you know, I'm not going to say that it was a bad thing at all. But now in retrospect, kind of looking back, well, I'll just I'll just move forward and then I'll tell you. Um, so I pull up at her at her there's a 
it, there's a little walkway. It's a, it's a driveway slash walkway because this cemetery is so small. There's like not places to park. You know, you literally like go down the same path that people walk. You drive down it and you park on the side of the, you know, the road and, you know, you go. And so I went and I took pictures. I put my stuff there and I took pictures and I played this song by Rob Thomas and obviously I can't play it for copyright strikes, but let me see if I can find it. Just at least find the name for you. If you guys, yeah, now comes the night by Rob Thomas. It is the first thing that came up. Um, and it's our song. And if you ever play it, if you've ever lost a loved one and you play it and you listen to the, especially if they've, you know, suffered from some horrible disease or something like that, it, it, it may have nothing to do with that, but it really connected with me. So that's always been our song in my eyes. And so every time I go there, I play that song. So this day I pull up and I immediately start getting anxious. And I'm sitting in the car for a little while. There were, there were a lot of people around, which, you know, I mean, it was like a really nice day, obviously. And I got a little nervous and I felt like a lot of guilt, a lot, a lot of guilt. And I think, you know, going back to the Relay for Life and everything like that, I think part of that was me not wanting to, wanting to honor her memory, of course, um, and not forget her. And then, you know, I mean, I laugh because like I almost immediately got this tattoo. So it's like, how could I forget her, you know, and I have pictures of her and, you know, everything like that. But, you know, it's not the same as like really remembering somebody you can remember somebody in here but remembering somebody in here you know what I mean memories and and stuff like that and even like what they looked like you know um I have I've lost I lost a few friends in high school and you know I look back on it now and I think about them and I don't have pictures of them you know there was no Facebook at that time or anything like that I have no pictures of them um I actually, I may have a picture. I'm sorry. I do have a picture of my friend Glenn that I lost in, um, actually we were, we were out of high school at this point. It was, it was a couple of years, you know, uh, later in life or anything like that, but he died in a motorcycle accident, um, freak accident. He, he, he turned a corner and hit dirt and you know, that was it went down. Um, it wasn't going fast or anything like that. He just, that was just it, you know? Um, but you know, and you remember that person in your mind. I remember Glenn in my mind. If I didn't have from that picture, like if I, if I didn't have that picture, I'm not, I mean, this was, you know, almost a couple of years after high school. So, you know, maybe like five or six years after high school. So, you know, would I remember him mentally? You know what I mean? I'll always remember him and I'll always remember things we did together and funny things and funny, you know, things that we did and memories, but his face, his actual facial features and everything like that. You know, and I'm always, I always think to myself too, I'm so curious as to like, where would those people be now? Would they still be in my life? Would they you know, what would they look like? You know, I mean, I know I look a whole lot different than I did in high school, um, you know, as most of us do. I may still think I look like myself, obviously, but, you know, just an older version. Um, but, you know, so that's what I was, like, really, really afraid of. And was that she was going to fade. And I was almost afraid to, if any of you guys can relate and you feel like, you know, telling your story down below or letting me know, please, please do. Because, you know, I almost felt like she was going to fade and then that would be my fault. And somehow it would be insignificant. I mean, I, I hate the term. It, it's so true, but they're like, life goes on. And it's true, and it's good, and it sucks at the same time. 
because someone you love has just passed. They've died. They're no longer here. They're no longer breathing air. They're no longer with their loved ones. They're no longer doing things. They don't, they don't get to walk outside and feel the, you know, the sunshine on them or feel, you know, the breeze or smell the air or, you know, anything. I mean, they probably do up in heaven, you know, I mean, if that's what you believe in or wherever, you know, whatever you believe in where they go, um, you know, but in fact, it's probably much better, <laughs> uh, from what I've heard, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think any of us knows. Um, we can only hope there's a better place, whatever, if it's heaven or reincarnation or whatever. I believe in a lot of things. So, um, you know, and so I was feeling really guilty. I was feeling very anxious. I was feeling, I don't know. I almost didn't get out. I almost sat in my car and just played her song on loop over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, I said, no, like, come on, you haven't been here in two years. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, you owe it to her. And again, like, you owe it. You owe it to her. You know, it, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right attitude. Um, and going back to the conversations, like, that my aunt and, and my m mother have had. Um, you know, I remember my mom saying to me, because I used to go there almost every day. I mean, like, don't forget, it's right around the corner for me. I used to go there almost every single day, especially when it was nice out in the winter, you know, not as much. Um, I would still go in the winter on holidays and, you know, her birthday, obviously with November, usually there's snow here in Connecticut on the ground by then, um, her death date, you know, and I would literally lay on the ground. Um, sometimes it was by myself. Um, I had just met Marin. I met Marin in 2011. I don't recall. I don't recall our actual anniversary that we mark as our anniversary was, is, is New Year's Eve, uh, 2011 of us, you know, being together. But I don't recall him being there. I mean, he didn't go to the wake. He didn't go to the funeral or anything like that. So I don't really recall him ever meeting Carolyn or, you know, so we either met like right after her death, but her death was December 15th. So we like pseudo dated you know, uh, we got to know each other for quite a few months before we actually made it official. So, so she had to have been around, but I just don't recall. I don't recall that at all. I mean, like I said, it was just such a dark, dark time. I know he didn't attend, you know, the services or anything like that. I don't remember him being there. I don't remember talking to him about her. I don't like afterwards, obviously, you know, once, once we met and stuff, but I, I don't, I, I don't remember, recall that. But I used to literally go there on a daily basis, rain, sun, shine, it doesn't matter. And I would lay where she was buried and just sob, like this guttural, screaming sobs. And I mean, my heart was just broken. It was just absolutely broken. And, you know, I mean, my mother doesn't even know that, you know. And then as time went on, I would, I would go visit. Marin was around and he would sometimes come with me. Um, was it a little awkward when he was with me? Yeah. You know, because I, it was really my place to just you know, day to day, you have your children, you have your things that you have to do and everything like that. And you don't, you can't really, you got to pull it together. You know what I mean? You can't really, even though I was in this deep depression, you still have to live. And, and, and again, so that going back to that, you know, life goes on, it, it's so, it's true and it's great. And your loved ones would want that. And I just felt like I, couldn't at that point but on the other hand it sucks because it's like well what does that mean like at the at the time you don't even know what that means you can't even comprehend 
not having this person in your life? Like, how do I wake up every morning? And who do I call? And if I have a problem, who do I talk to? And who do I have coffee with? And who do we bitch to each other about? And, you know, about, you know, about other people. And then like, it, it, it's just, it was just so crazy. So, you know, after about year three, because this will be, they just had a golf tournament for her. They have a memorial every year. This year was the last year. Um, memorial tournament fundraiser for her children for college, you know, for college funds and stuff. And this was the last year we missed it. We never get the memo. It really pisses me off, but whatever. Um, you know, and, you know, I... So by year three, like, I just got to the point where, you know, I was listening to my mom saying, you know, this really isn't healthy. You shouldn't be spending every day there. You should be at your therapist. You should be, you know, talking things through. And I didn't want to. Like, I literally wanted to crawl into that coffin with her. Like, I, I, I just wanted to be close. I just wanted to wrap my arms around her like I did the day she died. Like, I just, and that day is a day that I will never forget. And, I, and, it, and it, oh, it just, it tears my heart out. There's so much guilt that I feel, which a lot of it, I shouldn't even feel guilt because it was not within my control is, is, I, I, I got a phone call and I was, you know, said that, you know, told that, you know, today was probably going to be her last day. And, you know, so you know, go see her. And I did. And she was home. And I crawled into bed with her. And I just remember stroking her hair and holding her hand and hugging her and just trying my best not to cry. She couldn't, she couldn't talk at this point or anything like that, you know, and, and the sound coming from her breathing was just so guttural and so like, like every breath she took, you were wondering if that was going to be the last one, you know? And I remember telling her that, you know, the hardest thing in your life is to be in that position with someone you love and say the words. It's okay. When every, every bone in your body wants to scream, no, don't, just come back, come back to me. But I remember whispering in her ear and telling her, it's okay to let go. You have fought so hard for six months. And you've been so brave and you've been so good to your children. And I promise you, they're going to be amazing. Because you helped raise them. You're their mother and you're amazing. And I promised that I would do everything I could to be there for them and take care of them. And I had a doctor's appointment. I was suffering from, I had like a respiratory infection or something like that. And uh, so I had to go to the doctor. So I left. I went to, well, actually, I went to urgent care. 
It wasn't even an appointment. I went to urgent care and I had talked to my mom and I said, I don't want to leave. 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 Because I was so afraid that she was going to pass away at that point there. But obviously, you know, we had to give other people, you know, chances to, you know, say their goodbyes and meet with her and stuff like that. And, you know, her parents were there and her husband and her children and, and us. And, and so my mom said, just take an hour. Just go to the urgent care. Get what you need done, done, and come back. You know? And I did. And literally, as I was leaving the urgent care, I was walking out of the office. I got a phone call from my mom, and she told me that Carrie was gone. And it was so bad. I was so mad because I could have waited. I I could have waited. I could have done it the next day. I could have, like, it wasn't a life or death situation. And I didn't end up going back there. I didn't, I didn't end up going back there. that day um I don't know why I, I don't remember I think I was just I couldn't even drive at that point I had to call somebody to pick me up and um but she was surrounded by loved ones and part of what part of that song that Matchbox uh, your Rob Thomas song, Here Comes Here Comes the Night, is there's a line that says, You will know, will not be forgotten and you will not be alone. And she was not alone, and she will never be forgotten. And she's not alone now. She's got my grandmother, my grandfather, and her grandparents, and, you know, everything like that. And But it got to a point. It got to a point where I just, I, 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 you know what, I still this day, I don't know, I don't really know why I stopped. I don't know why. I don't know why I stopped going. Um, I, I, I think that, um, things got that bad that I stopped going. Um, to the point where I wasn't, you know, I wasn't bathing, I wasn't leaving the house, I wasn't, you know, I just, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> And then life happens, you know, you have children, you have grandchildren, you know, you have things that you, you know, that you, that you need to do, everything like that. So, you know, my daughter had moved back from Arizona, which was amazing because she moved into my house with uh, my, with the ba baby at the time. I'm always, he's always going to be my baby, but he's now eight, my grandson, and she went to school and she worked. And so I did a lot of stuff with my grandson. I raised him, you know, um, and my son, you know, lived with us too. So, you know, it was quite a crowded, I slept on the couch for two years while they were there, but it was quite crowded, but I loved it. I loved it. I loved, it really helped get me out of my funk. Um, and just watching this little bundle of joy, just, oh God, just make, taking his first steps and feeding him his first Cheerios and, and watching him just, you know, take clothes in and out of hampers and, you know, and just, and that being fun for him, you know, it was great. So, So on this beautiful day, it was, it was, it was a beautiful day and it was, it was perfect temperature and everything like that. And it was, 
but it was, it was, you know, kind of sun coming in and coming out. Like, you know, it was kind of cloudy, kind of overcast. And I, so I put those little decorations that I showed you up. And I played her song. For a while, I just sat there. I didn't play the song. And then I played the song. And I was sitting, you know, I was taking pictures and stuff. And, and I was sitting, you know, Indian style, on, you know, on the grass. Like, no, no whatevers. You know, no blanket or anything like that. I used to always bring blankets. But I, like, I wasn't planning on this. I, was, I just wasn't planning on it. It was just, a, 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 you know, I just drove by and said, oh, geez, it's been two years, go. So I started to play her song and I played on loop and I, it had started to, it had started to get over, it had started to get overcast. Like it wasn't very sunny as you can see in the picture. Like they're, they're not like really clear because there were clouds. Um, and I put my hand. On, because it, it the, her headstone is divided, um, you know, in two sections because it was where her husband, you know, was supposed to be buried on one side and her on the other. And her husband has since remarried. Um, I, I've only met the woman once, um, you know, I, and the guilty part with her, with her kids, like I'm saying, is that they, they almost immediately moved to Vermont. Um, he got a new job and everything like that. And so we really kind of lost touch. Um with the kids. Like I didn't get to see them as often or anything like that. They didn't come to family things and, and a lot of times and everything. And plus they were going to school, they were college kids. You know what I mean? Like it, it was just, it was just, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was just a kind of a, a situation. So like for me to feel guilty really wasn't like, you know, do I? Yeah, kind of, you know what I mean? But on the other hand, like it, it was kind of out of my control. It really wasn't life, life moves on. And and there really wasn't anything I could do. But I remember playing the song and just closing my eyes and touching her name on the gravestone. And just putting my head down and just sobbing. Like there was this energy. Because like when I had gotten there, it was anxious. And it was, it was, it was, you know, like when you, when you want to cry, but you can't like that, that you get that knot like right here. And it's just like, you, you, you feel like you want to cry, but you can't like, you're just, you're just like, Oh, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but I put my hand and I put my head down and the song started playing. And then it got to a, that certain part where it says, you will, and you will not be forgotten, and you will not be alone. And I just started bawling. And as I was crying, like the whole world was blocked out. There were other people there. I didn't care. Like, like I, I just, I felt this, this, like just warmth overtake me. And that knot that was there, I was able to just release it. And with that release came the tears. And I just sobbed and I sobbed. And I just said, you know, I would just, what I would, I said, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. This is what I would not do for one more day. And to just put my arms around you one more time. And then they said, no, like, I don't want one more day. People always say, I want one more moment, one more second, one more, one more day. I don't want one more day. I want it all. I want it all back. I want it all back. And then the weirdest thing happened. And I was saying that. Like, I was like, I want one more day. And then I was getting so angry. And I was saying, 
I was like saying no. I don't want one more. I want more. I want more. I want more. And as I was sitting there at this point, I hit put my put my hands here, and I was I was kind of rubbing my knees, and I was kind of like I was mad. I was sad. I was, you know, and I I looked up. And everything turned red. My eyes were still closed, but everything turned just this brilliant, brilliant red. From underneath, you know, I could see from underneath my eyelids. And this warmth just came over me. And I opened, I, 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 I like, I let out a breath. And I had stopped crying. And I felt peace. And the sun had come out. And the weirdest thing was right at that time, a bee. Now, it was a bumblebee, but it doesn't matter. A bee is a bee to me. A spider is a spider to me. Like, I don't care. Like, no, stay away from me. This bee came and it landed like, right near my knee. The big you know, hairy, you know, bumblebee. And normally I'm freaked out. And I just sat there staring at it. And I had no fear of this insect whatsoever. I sat there, I stared at it, I looked at it. I admired how furry and fluffy it was. I, I saw the little pollen, it was on a little clover, and I saw the little the pollen, you know, on the back of its legs, and I just, I, I, it was so odd, like, there was no fear whatsoever, and I got up, and I brushed myself off, and I laid my head like this, under tombstone for a little while, and just closed, you know, Kind of rock, rocked back and forth. Just closed my eyes. And just said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But at that point, like, like I was, I was at peace. And I was, I was tired. And I was at peace. So as cliche as it, as cliche as it sounds, I want people to know that if and when this happens to you, it will get better. I'm not saying if somebody you know loses someone, you tell them it'll get better. Or, you know, and a lot of people too, like after three years, they're like, Curse, get, get, like, not get over it. They didn't say get over it, but it was like, you know, come on, move on. You know, and I'm like thinking, you know, fuck you, fuck, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, there's no in my in my that was my well, this is my third time trying to tell you what my aunt said to my mom was leave her alone. My mom's like, this isn't normal. This is not normal. Like she's there every single day. And my aunt said, leave her alone. You know, referring to me, like everybody grieves in their own way. Like, just, if that's what she needs to do, let her do it. And, you know, everybody's going to grieve in their own way. But as I was driving home, and the reason I tell you it will be okay, is, I still, as you see, it's still not a, a, a happy subject. It's still not something that does not cause some pain. But, as I was driving home, I was sitting at the red light and I looked up and I said, you know, wh whoever up there, thank you. Thank, I just, all the memories of us growing up flooded. They just flooded back. Like all the stupid things we used to do with our brothers and together and even in college, you know, the bars we used to go to, and I used to always take her out of her element. She was very, very conservative, and I was 
so not, as you guys can tell, still I'm not, and, you know, I would so take her out of, you know, I mean, we would go into Hartford to the bars, and, like, I would be cranking the music, and I'd be driving in my, 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 in my Kia, you know, Sportage, and, you know, screaming out the window, singing out the window, and, you know, singing, pointing her, and singing, and pointing her, and all the windows rolled down, she'd be like, oh my god, you know, like, but we'd be laughing and having a great time, it, and, you know, all these memories just came flooding back and flooding back and flooding back. And I said, thank you. Thank you for giving me the time that I did have with her because we created a lifetime of memories. Memories that will last me a lifetime. Literally, to have somebody like that in your life every single day day that you are not biologically sisters with, but you may have what as well have grown up in the same house. So, you know, just know that I love each and every one of you. Death is never easy. I hope parts of this were inspirational for you. And if you're suffering the same thing, they give you some hope that five years later, here I am on video discussing it and talking about it. And I can just, I can, I can actually smile along with my tears, but I can actually smile and think of just the stupid things we did. Stupid, stupid. I mean, from like little, little kids all the way up, you know, to in our 20s and stuff like that like it's just oh my god we made so many great memories but just you know it will get better it'll never change it'll never fill that hole in your heart that hole will always be there and I think it's meant to be there I don't think anybody you know again because these people are not replaceable so that little hole is always going to be there. Is there room in your heart for other people and new people and other people to leave and new people to come in? Absolutely. But that hole is reserved. It says, no parking here. Reserved for Carrie. You know? But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So this video, way longer than I expected, guys. Hope you guys watch this or just listen to it. Um, I'm not going to edit anything. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I love you very much. And I will see you next time.